Over the next few minutes, I want to introduce you to Dash, a web application framework written for Python and data science. This is an example of a Dash app. There are input elements like dropdowns and sliders. And as I update these input elements, output elements like graphs and tables update with new values. The really cool thing about Dash is that to write an application like this, I didn't have to write any HTML, JavaScript, CSS, or worry about API calls or server logic. This app was written entirely in Python. Dash's web graphics are built on top of Plotly.js, a JavaScript graphing library written and maintained by Plotly over the course of the last three years. With Plotly.js, graphs are inherently interactive. As I hover over the chart, tooltips appear with the values that I'm hovering on. I can click and hide legend items to hide and show traces. I can click and drag in the chart itself to zoom in and pan around once I'm there. The power of Dash is the ease in which I can build user interfaces like this in just pure Python. This application in its entirety is written in about 80 lines of code. There are three different elements, a header, a dropdown, and a graph. And as I change values in this dropdown, the graph below updates. To recreate an app like this, first I have to describe the layout of the app, which is how the app looks when I initially load it. In this case, I've got three elements, this header, which is an H3 HTML element, a dropdown, and a graph. The development cycle with Dash is really quick. If I want to just change this element to say stock tickers instead of Dash apps, I just have to save my file and click refresh, and I can see the new updates immediately. In Dash, all of these elements are just Python classes. In this case, this dropdown element has three elements, Coke, Tesla, and Apple, and I can see that reflected in the UI itself. This first part of this app just describes the layout of the application. It doesn't describe how the app should update. The second part of Dash apps describes how input elements should update output elements. In this case, as I update new values in this dropdown, my graph gets updated with that new stock ticker. In code, I'll wrap functions with a Dash decorator, where the first argument of the decorator is the output elements. In this case, that's this graph, which has the ID my graph. And the second argument is a list of input elements. In this case, there's just one, and its ID is my dropdown. Now, whenever I change this dropdown, this function is going to get called. And it'll get called with the new value of the dropdown. So in this case, this function will get called with the stock ticker Tesla. With this value, I'll make an API call to Yahoo Finance using Panda's data reader. This returns a data frame, and with that, I'll construct a figure. In this example, I'm just plotting the date versus the close price, but I could return and plot anything that I wanted to. For example, I'll plot the close price versus the open price. I'll save this and refresh the app and see the days with the greatest swing. And that's the power of Dash. You have complete control over the interactivity in your web applications. It's easy to get started with Dash. We have an online user guide which will help you get started creating and deploying your first Dash app. And a library of all of the available components in Dash, from dropdowns to sliders, text inputs, checkboxes, and more. We also have a showcase of high quality Dash apps and the code that is required to build them. Dash will be available for wide release in the spring of 2017.